all right everyone welcome back to my channel you are watching Oshi Reads my name is Oshale and I know y'all are here for the tea because the last video I posted I let y'all know that I am doing a no buy year for 2020 I know what you want to know how's it going <laughs> as I'm filming this video right now it is Thursday so it has officially been one week and one day of the new year and I'm here for my progress report. I'm here to check in. I'm here to share with y'all, my accountability partners, how it's been going so far. You guys, it's hard. It's hard out here for you, girl. I didn't realize how addicted I was to buying things. You guys, oh my gosh. Y'all, this is so hard and yet so easy at the same time. A lot of it is mental. It's such a mental thing. And I made that mental switch into now whenever I think about eating out, which we'll talk about that in a second because I failed. But whenever I think about spending money, like any type of thing that I used to overspend on before, I now think about it as a dollar amount. Before, all I was thinking about was the thing that I was buying, the thing that I would be getting, the thing that would be coming in the mail, you know, how we feel about packages. We love packages. And I would just think about the thing, like, oh, I want that thing, I want that thing, I want that thing. But when you make the mental switch to, oh, that thing costs money, that thing costs money, how much money is it? And you attach a value to it, a monetary value, all of a sudden, you're like, uh, no, I want to hold on to my coins. I don't want to just buy that willy-nilly. So it's definitely cut down on my impulse buying. I will say that I have not impulsively bought anything. Well, that's not true. <sighs> okay, okay. Let me talk about what's been hard first in my defeats. So it's confession time. It is confession time. And <sighs> after New Year's Day, January 2nd, I ate out. I know, I know y'all hate me, but you guys, I failed <laughs> second day of the year. And okay, I will put it this way. I know what my triggers are. It's my job. My job is extremely stressful right now. And it has been for the past mm, seven or eight months. And I had a two week vacation and that was amazing. But coming back to work was such a shock. And then right after I came back to work, we had the holiday season. So the week of Christmas and the week of New Year's, I was not mentally at work. You know, like it's the holidays and you have to work. And at my job, I'm literally working up until the day off. So we were open Christmas Eve. We were open New Year's Eve. And I was working both those days because I'd had two weeks off earlier in the month. And so I covered those, you know, holiday times so that my coworkers could take off since they covered for me while I was gone. You feel me? So I felt so triggered because we, I worked on New Year's Eve and then not obviously not into the eve but you know what i mean then we were off new year's day we were then i came back to work the day after new year's day on the second and let me tell you the anxiety of going back to work i wasn't prepared because you know with the eating out thing i said oh i'm gonna i'm gonna cook and i'm gonna meal prep and i'm gonna i'm gonna eat groceries only i wasn't prepared i just come off of a holiday and i had gone to my parents house to eat or i think i had some leftovers from christmas actually and so on the second going into work I had no plan I had no food in the house I hadn't gone grocery shopping I was being lazy I stopped at McDonald's I stopped at McDonald's you guys and I felt so bad like my order was literally only about five to six dollars but I still felt bad I felt horrible when I got my my sausage muffin and my caramel macchiato and my small fry I felt so bad but I was starving and I was anxious and I was going into work and it was gonna be a long day and I was stressed and I hadn't prepared and I didn't have any groceries and I didn't wake up early enough to rummage through my fridge and scrounge something it was a mess I will tell you what though as I was driving away from McDonald's I said this is it soak this in really enjoy these meals really really taste this mcmuffin even though it's not real food none of this is and really take this in because girl this is it we are not doing this in 2020 we are not we are getting prepared and i'm proud to say since that day i've only eaten out one other time and i can explain that 
It was actually this past week, earlier this week. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday. I got Moe's. Now, y'all might not know what that is. It's kind of like Tex-Mex Mexican food. Not authentic Mexican food, but I got like a, a rice bowl with beans and veggies and some chips. And I got that because it was another day where I hadn't really prepared and I was stressed about work. So at least I know what my triggers are and I've done a lot better. Because the eating out thing did not start with the new year. So that's why I don't feel as bad. The eating out thing actually started in December. I started it early. And I started it early because I was so horrified by how much I'd spent January through November of 2019 on eating out. I looked at my bank statements and I was disgusted with myself. So the eating out ban started in December. And in December, I did amazing. I didn't, I think I ate out only once in December. And that was the weekend I was sick and I just didn't feel like cooking or getting up at all. So I got takeout. Oh, and when I was in, when I was in on my vacation, I went to New York to see my godson and I ate out. I ate out there, I'm not gonna lie, twice. I got Indian food twice. I got Indian food twice and I got uh, Japanese food once. So three times and I was there for seven days. Nah. And while I was traveling, of course, you know, I was getting coffee from, you know, it's an eight hour drive to and fro. But I allowed myself that. I was like, I'm on vacation. I'm gonna be traveling across state lines. It is what it is. But anyways, so in the grand scheme of things, when I looked at the, my numbers, okay, show me the receipts, you know what I'm talking about? I did my research and I went to my bank statements and I looked and I cut down on eating out between the beginning of December and this week, I cut down by 70%. 70%, it's probably more like 77% if I wanna be exact. But over 70%, I cut down on my costs on eating out. So that was the confession. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Whew. So there was that incident, there was Moe's, which happened yesterday. And then our, our regional director did, did purchase Chipotle for us earlier this week as well. So it wasn't my dollars going towards it, but technically I still ate out but I didn't pay for it. It's my little happy dance because I felt like I got away with something that day. But yeah, so that's the eating out thing. In terms of just the impulsive buys that I would do on Amazon especially, I have not done that. I have not, I have not. Thank, thank Jesus. I feel so accomplished, I really do. I feel so good about myself. But now I know like that my biggest issues are really food. And how much food is connected to my emotions for me. It's insane. When I had a really bad day or a rough day, I want to get something savory. I want to get something special. I want to get something fattening and, and treaty, right? I don't want just my normal food of vegetables and fruits. How dare I just eat healthy when I've had a rough day? What is that? <laughs> That's literally my thought process. And knowing that is important because knowing your triggers is everything, right? And I've learned so much about myself. The fact that I didn't realize how money motivated I am, but I am. Once I switch my mindset to this is money, instead of just looking at an item and thinking, oh, the item, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. Attaching the monetary value to that item and seeing the money first before you see the item. And when you see the item, all you see is how much it's worth. I didn't realize how money motivated I am because now I'm like, Nope, not getting that, it costs money. Nope, not getting that, it costs money. Nope, not getting that, yes, you guessed it, it costs money. So Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime has missed me, has really, really missed me <laughs> this past week. And really, I wanna say this month, cause like I said, I really started in December. Although December was rough with the holidays cause I was buying gifts for people and I was getting a lot of stuff delivered because I was furnishing my home. But yeah, that's my check-in. One week and one day into the new year. I'm doing pretty well. Hold on a second, these dogs. I'm really freaking proud of myself and I'm so excited to continue. I've made some really positive changes as well just in my life. I'm back on my healthy eating journey because I'm not eating out. So I'm not eating this bad, fattening, trans fat filled food. I'm eating fresh food from the grocery store and I'm eating produce and 
I'm drinking more water. I started going back to the gym this week. I'm feeling great, motivated. My skin is clear, okay? Like, life is good. 2020 is off to a great start. I will keep you all posted because I'm sure I'm gonna hit some snags. Like now, I just realized today that I was out of a lot of things and I need to go to the store and re-up. And y'all, I'm scared. I'm scared I'm gonna, I'm scared I'm gonna backslide. I'm scared I'm gonna be at the store and be like, ooh, what about this, ooh. Cause I am notorious. You know that, that ever, ever famous story of walking into Target for one thing, $200 later? That is me. That story and I, we are one. So I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> I noticed I ran out of certain cleaning products and certain things for the dogs. And I'm just like, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm like, can I just order this online, the things I need? <sighs> my Amazon Prime might actually come hand handy for that. But we'll see. I will definitely keep you all posted. Let me know if you're doing a no buy year, how you're doing. Did you have some slip ups like I did? If you did, it's okay. Just learn to give myself grace. It's a process and I can't expect to be perfect right out the gate, right? It's just not realistic. So comparatively, I'm doing a great job. I'm patting myself on the back and loving on myself. I'm giving myself some grace and y'all let me know how your no buy year is going. And if you have any tips and tricks for me, please leave those in the comments below. <sighs> One thing I didn't talk about in this video is my pre-orders. And by my pre-orders, I mean my anticipated releases for 2020 and the books that I'm really excited about. And you guys, I'm really, it's really hard. It's really hard because I had over $400 worth of pre-orders and I felt sick to my stomach by that because there are a ton of books that I pre-ordered last year and the year before last year that I haven't read yet. And so I went and I deleted some because I looked up their Goodreads reviews and then the other ones, I just couldn't bring myself to delete. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know. Maybe by the next update, I'll have an answer for y'all. As of right now, I still have at least $300 worth of pre-orders. <laughs> Let's not, I, I'm not, I don't wanna talk about it. I'm not ready, I'm not ready. But I'll catch y'all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah! Again, if you like this video, please give it a like, please subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next update. <laughs> Pray for me, y'all.